Hi, my name is Dave Whitesley. I'm Technical Director of Envisage UK Limited, and I'd like to uh, introduce you to uh, a new add-in that we've written for Inventor 2014 called iNumber. Uh, this is auto numbering for Inventor files. iNumber supports automatic uh, part numbering and automatic assembly numbering. We also support, uh, we have support for the frame generator and you have an optional support to automatically number drawings and IPN files. Sometimes you want the drawings and IPN files to take their names from the part or assembly numbers. You have the option in this case. We also support uh, the auto numbering of design accelerator components. We also support multi-body modeling, automatic numbering. We support assembly mirror. We also give you an option to uh, put the uh, current date in the uh, automatic number and we've also got an option in there to put the project name in the uh, automatic numbering system as well. It uses a very simple database that you share on your server and I'd just like to uh, run through uh, the software with you now. Okay, so an event of 2014, I'm just gonna start a new part. Now, what the system does is uh, when you first start Inventor and it, if it doesn't uh, find the shared database on the server you'll be prompted to point to that uh, file that's basically the uh, configuration that's needed and once we're in the system if I just uh, quickly um, create something and save it as soon as I go to save what happens is this uh, because I've got a number of uh, schemes, uh, file numbering schemes for IPT files, I get a list of uh, the schemes that uh, I have available to me at this moment. This would have been configured by the drawing office manager or somebody who's got the ability to edit the uh, database. Um, it will remember the last setting that was chosen. I can also, if I want to use a particular numbering scheme for the rest of my session, then I can always tick this box here and then from then on whenever I save files I'm not uh, interrupted by this box coming up again so we'll save that brings up the save dialog box brings out the next uh, number and puts it into the file name uh, box here uh, as per normal if you wish you can always overwrite it it just puts the next number in for you okay if we work with um, an assembly same sort of thing in this case I'll shoot straight over to the creation of um, frame generator and just show you how the frame generator works with this software so if I just create um, and here we go look we're creating a part that I'm going to use for the frame generator so I'll make this reference uh, but it's automatically bringing out the next uh, component number for me in uh, from my uh, automatic numbering system and we'll just uh, place this component in the assembly, create a simple box for the frame. Okay. We'll return out of that, save it. This then gives me the numbering schemes available for me uh, in when I'm uh, saving IAM assembly files. Uh, let's use my SA scheme for that and I'll remember the settings for the future. But I'll go ahead and save my assembly using that scheme. Okay, so we'll go to the frame generator. And we'll choose some sections. choose a couple of edges we'll click on uh, OK and what it now does is the system will automatically name the frame assembly and the skeleton file name based on the parent assembly of the frame generator 
Um, so in other words, my parent assembly is SA0002. It'll add dash frame for the, uh, the frame assembly name and it'll add dash skeleton for the skeleton file name, which gives us a unique file name, which is extremely useful when we're working with the vault from, uh, down, from uh, further downstream. If I click on OK on that, what will happen now is it will actually automatically number the frame members again based on the assembly's parent name. So these are now going to be called SA002-0010102 and 03 and so on, both in the file name and the display name. You can configure this if you wish. This is what a lot of customers have asked us to do, um, but this can actually be configured. But it does mean that from now on, in the frame generator, you have unique file names, but also everything is based on the parent assembly, so there's more traceability available to you. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, support for uh, multi-body modeling. So if we just create a quick multi-body multi -body model of some sort. Let's just sketch on the top here. Draw, sketch, split it. Make two components. So we've got two solid bodies. Let's just change the properties of one. Okay, save this. Again, it brings out our next automatic number. And what we'll do now is we will have a look at the uh, multi-body model export. So we'll just make components from this. Automatic assembly is created. If we support the solid bodies here, click on next. Again, using the automatic numbering scheme, it creates the next um, part, automatic part numbers. And away we go, everything's saved. And everything's got the correct part number in. Let's have a look at the support for um, mirror. So we'll take the assembly here, select some components, click, select the mirror plane, tell it that we want to create, um, we want to mirror the components, click on next, and again it automatically creates the automatic part numbering, uh, the automatic, automatic numbers for these mirrored parts, um, again from the automatic numbering scheme. Let's have a look at the design accelerators. So if we go to the shaft as an example, let's just save this assembly. Okay, if we put a shaft in here, what happens now is um, because the shaft is actually a part, it will create um, the shaft itself with the next part number from the numbering scheme. But the sub-assembly, which we don't use because it's... Um, it's not displayed in the bill of materials, it's just a placeholder, if you like, for the uh, shaft. We give it the same name, so both of these are PP0011, but uh, we're using the part numbering scheme, so the shaft is correct. It's just put into the same name for the assembly as a placeholder. And the great thing here is when I add it to the, uh, the assembly, you can see the shaft here has got the correct part number against it. And the same with springs, the same with gears, bearings, um, uh, bolted connection, all of these support the new numbering system. How do we edit this? Well, behind the scenes we have a, a scheme editor, and this scheme editor lets us create a number of different schemes with whatever patterns we choose to use whether parts, assemblies, drawings and IPNs are supported, whether of course they're in use. Once they're in use we can't delete or edit them. Whether they're active we can turn that on or off. That's in the green area here so we can we can actually click on these block boxes here, make them active. Um, we can click on edit to actually go and edit uh, schemes. Um, if there's uh, the pattern um, and that enables us to put in um, the number of decimal places we need, whether we want to pad the numbers so they begin with the zeros, whether we want to change everything to uppercase. 
Um, we've also got the ability to actually enable the auto numbering and enable the frame generator separately because you may as a, as a company want, not want to use the frame generator portion of this or you may want to use the frame generator and not the auto numbering. The frame generator pattern is here so this is what pattern we use to actually create the uh, numbering for the frame members. Um, we can also, dis at the moment, the default is that drawings and part numbers aren't actually auto-numbered. They take the, uh, the file name from the part and the assembly. But if you want to, if you tick on these boxes here, then this will enable you to actually uh, number the drawings and IPN files totally separately from a numbering scheme. Um, that's the, uh, the, uh, uh, the numbering scheme editor. Uh, the uh, software is finished it's uh, available from ourselves envisage uk limited we are supplying it free to our customers who are on subscription who ha or who have purchased software from us uh, we will possibly be making it available to the rest of the world at some point if you're interested please email me the software is extremely valuable to companies who want to use automatic numbering schemes may not be using one of the purchased vaults that have a numbering system in them um, as you can see we do support a lot of uh, different options with the numbering system and uh, it is invaluable to companies who want to uh, number everything um, possibly put it into uh, one of the vaults but to have the flexibility of creating the numbering schemes themselves and decide when they use them uh, and keep them in house uh, for um, internal use. So thank you very much for uh, watching. If you are interested, there's my uh, contact details below and uh, thank you.